This is the Jeff Orovitz Show on 97.1 The Big Talker. Well, it's opening day at the Arizona legislature. What's to come? I've got a bunch of clips of Governor Ducey's final state of state address. The Jeff Orvitz Show starts now. All right, folks, welcome and thanks for listening. Jeff Orvitz here. Happy to be here with you today. Hope you all had a great weekend opening day at the Arizona legislature. And Governor Ducey gave his final state of the state address and lays out, I guess, his vision for this final legislative session. I've got a bunch of clips for you and analysis of what's what I think is to come here in this legislative session. Uh, plus, uh, does I want to talk about this quite a bit, and I'd love to get your take. If you would send me an email, talkwithjeff at iCloud.com. Does Governor Ducey really have any juice left in him? And I don't mean any disrespect but he has made quite a few political enemies when it comes to his response to COVID and a lot of things that happened last legislative session, which, which wound up making a bunch of bills, quite frankly, uh, go away because the Arizona Supreme Court. So has he lost so much of his base? Uh, he tried to appease the Democrats and the leftists early on, especially in COVID, all the way up until the summer of 2020. And m- much of his base has just not been able to get past that and forgive him. And remember, the Democrats and the leftists are never going to agree with him. So there's not a lot of support left there. And he really made a lot of fun. Like myself, I, I have had, I've had him on the program many, many times until COVID hit. And I, I just could not sit back and watch what he was doing at the time. He tried to reverse course and he did reverse course on a lot of issues after that, but it was uh, too little too late. And uh, we'll see what happens with this legislative session. Uh, Failing relationship with President Trump also hurt him. Uh, bad relationship with President Trump, former President Trump. Uh, so the legislature will see how much they're willing to actually work with um, with Governor Ducey. Remember, a lot of these bills for critical race theory, trying to stop critical race theory, uh, making it so schools can't have a mask mandate, they were passed by the legislature as standalone bills. But then Governor Ducey vetoed them all in a temper tantrum last year. He says, you must pass the budget first. You have to pass my budget. You send any bills and any bills that are on my desk right now, I'm vetoing because you haven't. How dare you, legislature, uh, as another branch of government, to do things on your schedule instead of my schedule? And he had what I call the temper tantrum. And he vetoed a bunch of bills, including anti things, bills against critical race theory. So you can't can't teach that in school and uh, the, the mask mandate, like I said. And now these kids are still, believe it or not, in many schools in Arizona. Flagstaff Unified School District is one of them. These kids are still going to school with cloth masks that now the left. And the media, the so-called mainstream media, the lamestream media, is now finally acknowledging what we were all saying a year and a half ago, that these cloth masks do nothing. But yet they're still forcing these kids to wear these dang things. Uh, So we'll see what happens and if he has enough uh, left in him to get these things done. I think the legislature is going to come back with a vengeance with these bills, critical race theory, the mask mandates against the mask mandates banning the mask mandates so i think he'll have that on his side but anyway i've got his whole uh state of the state address broken down here uh he just finished it up a little while ago so we will play you uh, a bunch of clips let's actually start with our first clip here uh governor ducey uh steps up here on the house floor uh down at the legislature and uh you got that clip Here we go. Here's Governor Ducey addressing what is his final state of the state and um, kind of pointing out the new members and then thoughts on his final state of the state. We've also got some not so fresh faces among us. Near the top of the list, me. I have the unique privilege of doing something today no Arizona governor has done in more than three decades reporting on the state of our state for my eighth time. And so I begin by expressing my sincere and eternal gratitude to the people of Arizona for entrusting me with two terms in this incredible job and to all of you for your partnership along the way. Thank you. But for those who think it's going to be a quiet year on the ninth floor, you haven't been paying attention. 
As I enter the fourth and final quarter, I'm reminded of something my high school coach told me. Get in and get the job done. And as I stand here today, the job isn't done. The goodbyes will come later, much later. I've got 357 days, 21 hours, 44 minutes, and 18 seconds <laughs> before counting? the end of the game. <laughs> and I intend to make the most of every moment and work hard all along the way for my employers, the citizens of this state. <laughs> all right, so that's this is Governor Ducey at the State of the State Address. I've got a lot more clips coming up, especially things when it comes to border security uh, and, and maybe teaming up with Texas to take care of some of our own border issues and not relying on the federal government. That one was very interesting. Stick around for that. Uh, also, education. You know, I've been pushing for ultimate maximum freedom of choice when it comes to education. I'll tell you what, I liked what the governor said. I hope the legislature will act. I hope we don't have one or two rhino-esque Republicans in there who stop freedom of choice when it comes to your education and uh, where you send your kids, how you educate your kids, and a lot more. So we'll continue to break down this entire budget or this entire um, state-of-the-state state address, including budgetary issues as well. I'd love your comments. If you got a comment, go ahead and email me anytime. We'll try to get them here on the program here during the 5 o'clock hour, bring Olivia in to read some of your comments. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Thank you to Just Wireless for sponsoring uh, our email and everything, their, our text line, and when we do our open lines as well. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Hang on, back in about 30 seconds here. Many experts are predicting that silver will double next year, this year, actually. And, you know, I certainly can't tell you that that will happen, but I do believe that diversification is the best way to protect your portfolio against market risk. And I also believe in having a portion of my investments in tangible, tangible assets. And silver does appear to be a hot buy right now. Now, Justin and my friends at Family Owned and Operated Desert Gold Exchange, they keep overhead low to deliver more physical gold and silver securely to you at the lowest possible price. There are many different ways to own silver. Call for a no-pressure quote on today's best value, or if investing in silver is new to you, Mention you heard it right here on the show, and uh, they'll send you up a free investor's kit. Call 888-852-4343. Get the best value on silver delivered secure, securely into your hands in 72 hours. Desert Gold Exchange, our family serving your family. Call 888-852-4343. That's 888-852-4343. Okay, we've got more clips here of Governor Ducey and the opening day of the legislature and uh, Governor Ducey's state of the state address. Next one up here is he's talking about uh, the jobs market here in Arizona and how Arizona's become uh, like a jobs juggernaut compared to a lot of the, the rest of the country. Uh, here's what he had to say about that. We wanted to be a jobs juggernaut, and in the process, we became a paycheck paradise. Plus, unlike California, Illinois, and New York, here you actually get to keep your paycheck. That's good. I'd like to keep more of it. <laughs> but still, there's no denying what's happening on a national level is straining families and seniors' checkbooks. Washington's spending spree, combined with mismanagement of COVID, has broken our supply chain and inflated the cost of everything. A <laughs> staggering surge of 6.8%. Food, clothing, gas, prescription drugs. The largest increase in the cost of daily life in nearly four decades. A White House in denial, it's even occurring. And a president hell-bent on printing and borrowing money while raising taxes. This is not a strategy that will help working people. It all makes our commitment of returning money to the people more important than ever. 
All right, and, and, and he's got more on returning money to people, but he's also got more coming up here in a minute regarding the state's ever-growing rainy day fund. Because remember, we got more people coming to the state, more economic activity, and the state's had record surpluses or record budget numbers, I should stay, say, every year. I started ringing the alarm when the state's budget was getting around $10 billion here just a few years ago. Last year, zip passed $12 billion, and every year they're like, it's just a billion more. It's just a billion more. Uh, so one, one more thing I want to say here that I noticed during his hour-long State of, Governor Ducey's hour-long State of the State address is uh, he did mention uh, Biden or the White House and D.C., Depart- um, Department of Justice. He, he really he focused a lot on Washington quite a few times, and it just it gets me wondering, you know, what's in his mind? Is he, is he running for something else? Uh, does he have this? Uh, I don't think he could be a viable candidate for president, but, but who the heck knows nowadays? Uh, does he have that in mind going forward? But he did mention it quite a few times. Now, uh, he did talk quite a bit about failed states and uh, the policies in several states that are forcing people to come to states like Arizona. Here's what he had to say about that. Coach has meant that people keep moving here. Less taxes means more taxpayers. During the pandemic, as other states grandstanded, Arizona protected lives, livelihoods, and individual liberty. People flocked here, and they've stayed. And who wouldn't love it? President Ronald Reagan once said that if the pilgrims had landed on the West Coast, They wouldn't have bothered to discover the rest of the country. (laughs) But today, there is an exodus from California. And the same is true of other states with similar flawed policies. The lack of opportunity fueled by bad governing philosophies are hurting real Americans and pushing them out to states like Arizona where opportunity is abundant. Sure, some have grown, but growth is a good problem to have. The alternative is to be a state in decline, misery, and decay. (laughs) No state's path to success has ever been paved with closed for business signs. Our only request to our new citizens is don't forget why you came here in the first place. Yeah, I, I can clap to that. This is one of the few times I'll clap during the hour-long Governor Ducey State of the State address. Yeah, remember why you left your state if you're new Freedom, here. Freedom, opportunity, and good government matter. Make no mistake, we will keep Arizona, Arizona. Well, I, I hope that's the case. Uh, we need to get some bumper stickers. Uh, don't don't see a Arizona, right? I hope that's the case. And yeah, it's definitely why so many people have decided to move to Arizona and to move to Texas and move to Florida. You vote with your feet. People are voting with their feet for freedoms and for more economic freedoms and and real freedoms. I mean, look at what they're doing. Still, they still believe in New York and California that if you mask up and and and, and have vaccine passports and all of this stuff that that. You you're going to be safe, yet there's record numbers of COVID. I mean, these people are, it's like a mental illness that's going on in a country. I've said this many times. So yeah, moving to many people moving to Arizona, I see the license plates. You see the license plates on the, on, on the highways. Uh, and by the way, we'll get to some highway stuff here in just a little bit with Governor Ducey's state final, if you're just joining us, final state of the state address as we continue uh, to break that down. Uh, one more here before we go to break on the budget. Uh, he gets into where we were uh, as far as a state, and we were in pretty bad shape, but so were a lot of people after the great financial crisis, and Ducey came into office, remember, in 2014, where we were and uh, where we're heading to uh, or where we're at right now. Here's what he had to say about this, and plus the rainy day fund that I was already talking about. Our way is tried and true. In the past, when Arizona has veered off course, It hasn't turned out well. And that brings us to another thing we found seven years ago when we got here. The state had amassed billions of dollars in debt through the recession, fueled by out-of-control spending in the early 2000s and budget shell games. They even had to sell off this building. A couple of years ago, thanks to the leadership here, we got the deed back. 
Well, that, that's a good thing. It's good, it's good to actually own your state buildings. And last year, we paid off billions more in debt, ratcheting it down to historically low levels. We took our rainy day fund to a record-breaking $1 billion. As a result, we have higher credit ratings than when we got here, and that means even more savings for the taxpayer. So why stop now? I'll present a budget on Friday that keeps this stewardship going, paying off more debt and topping off our rainy day fund so that we don't just own this house, but we leave the people's house truly in order. Uh, you know, the thing with the rainy day fund is, and I, I mentioned this earlier, uh, it was, it already surpassed a billion dollars. And keep in mind, the state's budget is now running about 12 billion. I suspect this year it's going to be more like 13 billion. It's, it's, it's overflowing. It, we need to start giving that money. See, you leave that money down in Phoenix and they are going to spend like crazy and just grow, continue to grow the budget as the state grows. California was like this at one point. So I got real concerned with growing that budget and growing that rainy day fund even more more it's time to send that money back home to uh, my pocket and your pocket and everyone else's pockets uh and, and we'll get a hold of governor Ducey's proposed budget coming up here hopefully friday we can break that down or into early next week uh, olivia is now joining me in in the studio and uh, we're going to take a break and then get back into uh, more of our breaking down of uh, governor Ducey's state of the state address but olivia it is time for sportsman's bar and grill a great sponsor here on the program it's happy hour up there right now you've got to take us you, i've got to take you but i i just can't get caught up i i, I spent <laughs> we spent time trying to get all these clips of governor Ducey's state of the state address uh it is monday night so that means three dollar quarter pound polish all beef or hot link with toppings plus three dollar hard seltzers at sportsman's bar and grill best sports bar, voted best sports bar uh what is it 13 years in a row now 13 years in a row. And uh, I think we might go tomorrow, though, because tomorrow's Taco Tuesday. So yes, let's, tacos. Let, let's think about that. Uh, but Sportsman's Bar and Grill, go on up there. I don't know how long they can keep these. They got great prices. And you see, and Governor Ducey just talked about that here a, a couple of minutes ago in one of the clips we pulled. You see the prices that are going up and the inflation. So uh, get your get your uh, three dollar tacos while you can because you can get tomorrow uh, shrimp, fish, lobster. But today you can get three dollar quarter pound Polish uh, all beef hot links. So go check out my friends at Sportsman's Bar and Grill up by the hospital in the Bashes Shopping Center. Gonna come back with more of Governor Ducey's clips from the State of the State address uh, at some point here during the five o'clock hour. We'll get to email comments as well. Uh, Olivia will read some of those. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Email them in. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Hang tight. Back in just a minute. Folks, welcome back. Jeff Orbitz here. I'd love your email comments as we continue to look at Governor Ducey's State of the State address. And today, uh, Monday, January 10th, opening day of the Arizona legislature, and he gave about an hour speech. What we think is, is coming. What do you think is coming? I'd love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Thank you to Just Wireless right across from the Flagstaff Mall. Drop off your smartphone. Get it get it repaired. Don't buy a new one. Uh, Just Wireless for sponsoring our email. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. I see the city of Flagstaff is distributing free, quote-unquote free, N95 masks. Um, by the way, um, I saw a lot of other media sharing that um, – you got to get the N95s because the cloth masks don't work. Studies have shown, <laughs> studies have shown that the cloth cloth masks. This is like the people that up until a couple months ago were saying you got to wear a cloth mask. They're finally saying that studies have shown that the cloth masks do little. They're saying little to stop the spread of Omicron, or as somebody on national media said, Oma, Omicron uh, virus. So they're they're trying to to to, to say that. 
when they do that, that, oh, it must have worked for the other ones, but it's just not working now all of a sudden. So they're, they're, anyway, the city of Flagstaff is distributing, quote unquote, free N95 masks uh, down at City Hall. I, I don't know. I don't know all the details. Maybe I'll try to get someone from Flagstaff City Hall, one of the council members or maybe the mayor. I don't know. It's It's been just a drama club down there. So get your free masks. Uh, get two masks. Uh, sponsor of this segment of the show is the Blind Brothers. And when you call the Blind Brothers for blind shutters or shades, you're going to work directly with them. And over three decades of combined experience, never with subcontractors. And right now, uh, my listeners, if you give them a call, mention a show, they'll give you half off at the Blind Brothers, half off installation, in addition to any other advertised specials. They're going to lay out all your options, not just the most expensive ones to fit your style and your budget. And yes, they are brothers. Uh, this is a great family-owned um, northern Arizona company. Uh, so do your neighbors a favor. Call the Blind Brothers for a free estimate at 928-634-2423. That's 928-634-2423. Or you can also go to theblindbrothers.com. That's theblindbrothers.com. All right, let's do more clips of Governor Ducey's final, if you're just joining us, uh, just a little while ago, he finished up what will be his final State of the State address. This lays out kind of his agenda and maybe the legislature's agenda. It also looks back. He did some of that. We played you those clips at the, the past uh, eight years. Interesting fact, he's like one of the few governors in recent history that's finished and done eight years of, of State of the State addresses. So State of the State addresses last time. He cannot run again uh, because he's termed out. I, I, I just smell and sense presidential undertones here because he mentioned the federal government many, many times, although a lot of them do that. But I, I think he has other ambitions. That's just my instinct. I, I could be wrong on this. We, we shall see, although I don't think he would ever have the base support going forward that he would need. But anyway, um, education has been huge for me. The only way you fix these broke school systems is and, – and, and speaking of masks, I mean, you got Flagstaff Unified School District still masking their kids up despite now – even the, the left, even the left stream media is now saying that the cloth masks don't work. And yet I, I see the kids in the school line. I take my kid, you know, I had to get my kid out of, out of a, a local charter school, Northland Preparatory Academy, that sent an email. We're still on their email list. They sent an email saying, oh, by the way, we might have to go back to remote learning. Oh, all their kids are masked up, though, since school started, right? Uh, so it, it, have they gotten the study that we've talked about that the masks don't work? So education's huge. Uh, he said at one point, and I'll play this clip here in just a second, too much attention has been put on masks and not nearly enough on math because, you know, these kids are falling behind. Uh, anyway, let's play this clip. Here's Governor Ducey on education. K-12 education is one of the reasons so many of us ran for office in the first place. But as an outsider, it was striking to me when I got to this Capitol that our school discussions weren't about what kids actually learned. Bureaucrats were competing for who could spend more money. Mm -hmm. Fewer dollars were going to the do? classroom and instead lining the pockets of trial attorneys. But we pressed forward, positioning Arizona as the number one school choice state in the nation. I agree with that. It's, a, it's better than being in California. A lot better. Or other states. You can send your kid anywhere uh, in Arizona or homeschool them, so it, it is a model. But we can do we can do more. And you might even say that here coming up. This is Governor Ducey during his State of the State address. Let's see if we get the applause down here. Should have cut that. When COVID hit, that designation was a lifeline for families. Some school leaders did everything possible to keep kids in the classroom, but too often, politics and virtue signaling took center stage. In the process, more parents got involved, and thank God they did. And, and I'd add more need to get involved and take control of their kids' Some education. Some voted with their feet, moving schools or school districts. That was me. And to totally different learning models, whether that's homeschooling or micro-schools. But other families have seen their kids fall behind. There's been too much attention put on masks. 
and not nearly enough placed on math. <laughs> Masks are more important than math. focus on restrictions rather than reading and writing. And it's students of color and those in poverty who have been most impacted by the COVID-era posturing and politics of some school board bureaucrats. So come June, we're launching a summer camp <laughs> with an emphasis on catching kids up in key areas, math, reading, and American civics. That's good. The kids aren't going to be happy about summer camp, but they've fallen so behind because of these bureaucrats. This is Governor Ducey's state of the state address. We will lead the way to eliminate learning loss. And in case you haven't checked Twitter lately, Arizona schools are open, and they will remain open. This on the backs, by the way, of Chicago school closing down, other school districts closing down because of Omicron. Continued craziness. That's good to hear. And in Arizona, In Arizona schools, we will not divide people by race. Arizona schools should be instructing our kids in the golden rule to treat one another with respect and judge people as Martin Luther King Jr. taught on the content of their character and not the color of their skin. This is leading up to a bill that was vetoed last year, I might add, which is critical race theory. So hang on. Here's Governor Ducey's State of the State address on education here. This session will make it clear. Students should be taught to think critically, not taught critical race theory. Sounds like a good bumper sticker. Another one. Yeah, but we had the bill. It got vetoed. Thank you. Then the Supreme Court got rid of it. I'll fill you in on that here in just a second. But let's not stop there. Parents deserve respect. And the occasional parent-teacher conference isn't enough. It's 2022. We've got the technology. Let's require all that a child is taught, all curriculum and academic materials be put online and available to search and review by every parent, grandparent, and interested citizen. Yeah, I I can totally agree with that. Uh, That is a bill that has been being floated at the legislature uh, since last year. I... I'll have to get some folks back on. I can't remember who ran this bill last year, but this was, this is simple. And I I applaud him for this. I'm glad he's coming around to this, but this bill was there last year, which is all material that the kids are being taught by these school districts. All material is put online and he's, he added, uh, make it all searchable. I think that's a phenomenal idea. Parents, now will parents actually take the time to do it and, and understand it? Well, maybe, maybe not, but at least it's out there for them. Try to get a hold of your kids' curriculum right now, the books and et cetera. And I would add they should also, any outside groups that come in to teach kids whatever, that material needs to be vetted as well. You may have not been listening to this program when we covered the uh, infinite universe of, of gender and cyborg as a gender and all that. Yeah, this was a real thing in Flagstaff Unified School District teaching seventh graders all this weird stuff. Uh, and, and, it, and parents were just shocked and outraged over this thing. Never really heard much from the school districts regarding what happened with that, uh, but we'll, we'll continue to watch that. So anyway, critical race theory uh, and putting all, your, putting all the stuff online as far as uh, the material. I'd love to hear from you. you, you, what do, you do you think this is a, a just, just talk, or do you think this is actually going to happen? Good idea, bad idea. I'd love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. I've got more education coming up and a, and a bunch more on, from Governor Ducey's State of the State Address. Sponsor of this segment is Sun State Tech, and while we all love living in northern Arizona, our businesses are running and operating in a global economy. Isn't that the truth nowadays, right? And um, 
you know, you need tools. We have tools that connect everybody to the entire world, but you need experts to help you compete and keep you safe. And since 2007, Sun State Tech has been helping Arizona businesses and municipalities operate quickly and safely. They handle cybersecurity, managed IT services, and much, much more. Uh, and you know what? Don't try to compete with substandard technology. Or over a vulnerable network, I'll add to that. At Sunstate Tech, they deliver the peace of mind that you need and the competitive advantage you deserve. Visit sunstatetech.com today to learn more and take advantage of their free, free, I'll stress that, no obligation technology risk assessment. Go to sunstatetech.com. Let the experts at Sunstate Tech keep your company safe and moving faster than the competition. Visit sunstatetech.com today. Visit them right now. We're going to take a quick break, come back with more on education. Then I, I want to get into Governor Ducey's comments that he made regarding um, border security and teaming up with Texas to try to fill the gap that the feds have left behind. Stick around. Hang tight. Back in just a few. All right, folks, welcome back. I um, am going to continue with more of Governor Ducey's State of the State address. Get into I got a little more on education, which the the kind of the great point of the speech that he did on education in just a second. Plus, uh, the border issue and, and these comments regarding the failure of the feds, which obviously we know that, right? But teaming up with Texas. So I'll play that again because I only heard it once. So I don't know if I fully understand what we're doing here yet. Uh, so we'll, we'll get, we'll listen together and, and see if we can figure out what he has in mind for the border and trying to take care of it as a state and some kind of, I don't, group of states coming together and saying, Hey, the feds have failed. This is a very, very interesting development. Uh, can you do me a favor? If you are seeing, any, uh, I want to switch topics here a little bit because I'd like to get into this maybe in the five o'clock hour and in, and then throughout the rest of the week. I think this month and next month is going to be hell to pay here when it comes to labor shortages and price increases. I, I really do because everybody is out sick. Not everybody, but so many people are out sick. I saw one headline that was predicting that upwards of five million people, something like that was going to call in this week across the country because of, of COVID, uh, because of the Omicron variant. And I, I think that's probably true. I don't believe a lot of these numbers these guys say, but everyone I talk to either just had it or is getting it, and uh, this thing is spread spread like wildfire. Uh, bad news there, but the good news is I, I think that this will finally get our country over. After two years, everybody's like, eh. And look at the numbers. I, I saw here in Arizona that COVID positive cases for today over the weekend or whatever, it was a high number. It was over 12,000, 14,000. Zero deaths, though. And we also saw, did you see this one? The the numbers of people in the hospital with COVID may have been overstated by 40, 50%, something ridiculous like that. Because what's happening is people are going to the hospital for other things or the doctor, whatever. They're going for other things and they get tested for COVID and they didn't even know they had it. And so they're being counted in those numbers. They're not there because of COVID. These people are such mass liars and they, they tweak the numbers and then they get caught and then they have to, to, to fess up to it. So there's a lot less people in the hospital than I think they're talking about because if, if look, if you're severely sick with COVID, I, I feel for you. I hope you're better soon. I, I'm not understating any of that. But most of the people I talked to had kind of a bad cold for a few days, and that's what most people are experiencing. That's why I think the country is going to be moving on when we get back to our normal normal uh, wranglings against each other here pretty soon. Uh, and, and Biden has failed just just uh, utterly in this matter. So anyway, here's what I want you to do. Email me if you're seeing the labor shortages or price increases, because I think there's going to be a lot of price increases coming. I was out today, and I was shocked at some of the things that had gone up. I, I looked at one big box store today, and, and I was looking at all the barbecues they had out, and I was shocked that you couldn't even get a little one anymore for, for like under 500 bucks. Maybe there's another place. Maybe I'm going to the wrong place here. But ju just, just things like that are, are huge increases that we're seeing already, and I think it's going to get a lot worse. But also, if you're seeing shortages out there, for example, my wife went to a bank today, 
uh, one, uh, one of the national, you know, big chain banks. And she, the drive through was closed. So she went inside, which is kind of weird because if there's an Omicron issue, you figure you'd want to use the drive through more and not have people inside. I don't, I don't care. But anyway, she went in, there was two tellers inside and they basically said that it was, they had to prioritize their lobby because that's all they said. She didn't press them very hard, which translated, I think means they didn't have enough workers and, and they only had two tellers inside. And then normally they have two tellers at the drive through window. So people are absent this week. So if you have any stories to share in that regard, please do so. Uh, send an email, talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Thank you to Just Wireless for sponsoring that. Speaking of sponsors, uh, Gutter Helmet of Northern Arizona, final sponsor here of the hour. Uh, great Northern Arizona company and gutter helmet itself is the number one gutter protection company in the world. Uh, but gutter helmet is not just a screen. It's a multi-patented reverse curve that deflects the pine needles and all the debris and all that stuff with a lifetime warranty and over 40 years of experience. If you don't want to clean those gutters, you don't want to go up on that roof. You need to call or text Carl, the gutter helmet man right now at 928-318-6555. And now may be a very good time because that snow is finally melting off uh, the roofs and stuff. So you can make his life a little easier. Get that taken care of and and, uh, call or text Carl, the gutter helmet man, and never clean those gutters again. In fact, the manufacturer offers a triple lifetime warranty. And don't forget to ask for their senior, their military, and their first responder discounts. Uh, Don't wait, though. If you call or text right now, you can save up to 30%. Call or text Carl, the gutter helmet man at 928-318-6555. That's 928-318-6555. 6555 or go to gutterhelmetnaz.com. All right, let's let's hit on education. One final comment here uh, regarding Governor Ducey and, uh, on education, and I think this is a good one here. Uh, let's see. Here it is. I think we got it. We 50 got it. plus years ago, politicians stood in the schoolhouse door and wouldn't let minorities in. Today, Union-backed politicians stand in the schoolhouse door and won't let minorities out. Many of our poor kids and children of color are trapped in a failing school. It's time to set these families free. Yeah, nobody should be stuck in a failing school. I mean... And, of course, not everybody stood up and and clapped at this, you know. Let's keep the kids in failing schools. A little bit more. This session, let's expand school choice any way we can. Greater open enrollment. New transportation models. More charter schools and more educational freedom for families, especially those in failing schools or who can't afford to pick up and move to a new neighborhood. Let's think big and find more ways to get kids in the school of their parents' choice. Send me the bills, and I'll sign them. I, I hope that's the case. And these are, I, I'm encouraged by this. Now, keep in mind, the Arizona legislature, the Republicans only have a, a one-seat majority. So one Republican, and we saw this happen last year, they can hold up the whole thing. Look, they will get no Democrat support on this. The Democrats want these kids to stay in your public neighborhood school. That's it. That's their 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 their, their model, and that's going to be their model going forward. I don't know why they can't see that that's not a good model. Now, I, I, I agree with the governor here, with Governor Ducey from his State of the State address, that you... Um, more charter schools, okay, but we've seen the failure of charter schools. We thought, and for a while, charter schools were a, a good answer, an alternative to the public neighborhood schools. They're both, look, don't be confused, both charter schools and your neighborhood schools, so the, just the regular, what we traditionally have called public school down the road that you drop your kid off or they get picked up in the big yellow bus, which may be changing uh, coming up soon because I think half the kids no longer ride public uh, the public buses, the, bu- the, the school buses anymore. Um, the Charter schools were a big solution for this state for a decade, two decades, and Arizona led the way when it came to charter schools. My daughter, Olivia, who will be back here in the 5 o'clock hour answering some of your emails, hopefully, if you get them in, talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. My kids went to a, a public or a – yeah, it's, it's a public school. It's a public charter school. Same dollars. 
the charter schools use that backpack of money. So it is a publicly funded school. It's a charter school, yes, but they can't say that uh, your kid can go there and your kid can't. If they have too many kids applying, they do a lottery system and they randomly pick the kids. That's how it's supposed to work anyway. I don't know. Maybe maybe, maybe there's something going on I'm, I'm not aware of. But uh, we thought that was a solution. Our kids went to the charter school, and they were great. I mean, this school, Northern Preparatory Academy, for example, they had a dress code at first. This was a while ago, and uh, they, they stressed certain things. And then it just kind of slid downhill. And we noticed it because my older daughter, who's now in college, Isabel, she went there and, and actually graduated. Olivia started there, but then they did the mask mandate, and she led that protest and said, I'm out of here. And we saw it slide, and then we saw diversity uh, equity and inclusion, which is a branch, an offshoot of critical race theory, which the governor now says that he he will he will sign bills banning critical race theory. I hope that's the case. Last year they were vetoed when he had his budget tantrum. Well, uh, I I don't know. I don't know what's changed in a year, but I hope he does sign that. So we saw this charter school go that route because the boards got in there, the board members got in there and, and infested the thought process. And get this with the charter school, unlike your local neighborhood public school where you actually vote for the, at least in my experience, and that's all I can share in this world is what I experience, uh, the local neighborhood school for all their faults, at least it's on your ballot as a community that you have to vote for the school board members. Now, now nobody does the vetting apparently because these people should not. A lot of these people should not be on these local school boards. They're uh, ideologues uh, in there. A lot of times they don't have kids in these schools. So the charter school, at least in my experience, like I said, NPA, they once you get in there, the board members vote for their board members, not the people, not the parents, not the not the not the community that goes to that school. The, the, the school body, shall we say, the families, they don't vote for the school board members. I was shocked to learn this, and I feel like I'm pretty educated on these things. The charter schools were in there voting themselves. And, you know, we had that issue with the school board member uh, who resigned from NPA, the school board president, after she said just atrocious things about the kids and people protesting the mask mandates. By the way, they've had a mask mandate since being in school. How's it working? How's it working? I just saw the email that said you're getting ready. Maybe, maybe you might have to shut down. We'll have to see. So anyway, um, uh, th- that school board president resigned, but they vote themselves in. That needs to be resolved in the legislature. But I fully agree with Governor Ducey. Let's, uh, let's get full school choice, not just the charter schools, not just your public neighborhood schools, but every aspect of it, including homeschooling and private school. It should be easy for kids to go wherever the best education is and not where some government bureaucrat tells them to go. I'd love your thoughts, folks. Go ahead and send an email. We'll try to get to these in the, in the next hour, next segment. Uh, talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Plus, I still want to get to more of Governor Ducey's State of the State address, including this border issue and this teaming up with Texas. Next hour, stick around. Teaming up with Texas going forward uh, to fill the gaps, literally, that the federal government has left behind in border security. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Back in just a minute. This is the Jeff Orbit Show on 97.1 The Big Talker. All right, partnering up with Texas on border issues as we continue to break down the opening day at the Arizona legislature and Governor Ducey's State of the State Address. Another hour of the show starts now. All right, welcome back. Last hour spent quite a bit of time going over Governor Ducey's State of the State address and uh, some good items in there. I do still want to get to the uh, border issues and uh, this teaming up with Texas. This one is is very interesting. Uh, it's a, it's an interesting development. I, I think you'll be surprised by the comments. We'll see if it goes anywhere. Uh, if you got any comments, what do you think so far? If you're listening last hour, or any comments on uh, what I'm about to play you some clips of the State of the State address from Governor Ducey? 
Uh, legislature started their session today, so they're back at it. So I guess uh, watch your wallets or maybe we'll get some money back. I don't know. I'd love to hear from you. Just wireless sponsors or email. You can email me, talkwithjeff at iCloud.com, talkwithjeff at iCloud.com. I'll break down where we're at so far uh, with this uh, his address and then uh, get into more of it here in just a second. A uh, couple updates. Uh, Arizona universities also returned today to stricter protocols because of Omicron. I think this thing's going to be blown over. Everybody's got this thing. Uh, everybody's got this thing. I think we're going to have a heck of a time, like I told you last hour, though, with labor shortages, price increases. I, I really think we're going to get to 9 10% official inflation here coming up pretty soon, which really means that we're going to be at 16 18%, maybe even 20% inflation if you do it the old way the government did until they changed the formula because it suited their, their needs. Uh, but keep emailing me comments about if you're seeing shortages out there, labor shortages, if you're going into places and having trouble getting service because people are out sick and they estimate that maybe 5 million people will be calling in sick this week because of Omicron. Although, did you see this one? The hospitals are starting to accept uh, people who, uh, they're workers who have COVID. So they're COVID, but they, maybe they're asymptomatic. They, they, they don't, they're not showing any symptoms. I'm not using that word. I always mess that one up. They're not, they, uh, they don't have any symptoms or they're on the, uh, you know, not very sick. So they're bringing them back. But there were states like Rhode Island, they're doing it. And uh, Arizona's now doing it. There's a health care provider where, yeah, if you got COVID, come back to work. But how many people got fired because they refused to get the vaccine, which apparently is working great uh, in, in stopping the transmission? It didn't. Um, how many people who are fully qualified to work are sitting on the sidelines? who probably already had COVID. And why, why not have those people come back? It's just uh, topsy-turvy here. But anyway, Arizona universities are back uh, to stricter protocols. Uh, I, I, I see that Lowell Observatory and Flagstaff is closing or has closed because of uh, COVID and Omicron. Uh, NEU basketball has canceled the next two games. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, free mask down at the city of Flagstaff, by the way. And finally admitting these cloth masks didn't do a dang thing. I said that I'd get banned. I'm not on social media anymore because of this garbage. We would get banned on social media for saying that these cloth masks are garbage, right? Just common sense would tell you that. Well, now everybody's starting to admit that. So the only ones that really work are these N95 masks. And apparently Flagstaff uh, City Hall is giving out, quote, unquote, I'm doing the big air quotes here, Free masks, the N95s, which do work if used properly, which, come on, the kids in school right now, if you actually were to get rid of their cloth masks, which you should, you should get rid of all their masks because kids are not getting very sick from this thing. They haven't been the whole way through. And and who was it? Uh, Walensky was on one of the uh, weekend talk shows, and she finally admitted that uh, the majority of people who are getting sick because of COVID are uh, have like four comorbidities. I mean, they got other stuff wrong with them, and I feel for those folks. They're finally admitting to stuff that we were talking about, myself, you, many others, for a year and a half. They're fi- it should anger you at, at how these people played us. And it's all coming unraveling right now, so it feels good for it to come unraveled, but it feels bad that it took this long, and, and I'm not, you know, who knows what's to come. I'd love to hear from you, though, your thoughts. Is this a great unraveling of the COVID hysteria? Is it all falling apart before our eyes, finally? What's the, what's the outcome for these people who propagated this for so long? What's going to happen to them? Anything? Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Go ahead and send that on in, and we'll try to get to some of your comments here in just a second. By the way, uh, sponsor this segment. Our good friends at Homeco Lumber and Hardware, and this is it's an awesome place uh, on Butler Avenue in Flagstaff. You go in there, and there are people in every department that really know their stuff, whether you need some paint or household stuff or the nuts and bolts or you need lumber. And by the way, if you need lumber, you go in there, drive through uh, lumber yard, which I did over the weekend and, uh, they'll help you load it up and it's, it's super convenient. You don't have to carry those big, uh, two by fours or two by tens or whatever through the store. Cause you drive out into the, into the lumber yard and load it up and uh, super easy, super convenient place, home co lumber and hardware. And it's, it's the friendliest place in town. And he just got a lot friendlier. As you know, you can shop online, save time and shop online at my home co home co spelled H O M. C-O-H-O-M-C-O, myhomeco.com. 
uh, for convenient, free, in-town, same-day delivery. Go check it out and uh, and see how great their service is there at myhomeco.com or just take a take a trip by uh, on Butler Avenue and uh, stop in there. They usually have the popcorn all day. They have the cookies and coffee in the morning. So great location, great spots. And plus, if you're a veteran, by the way, with ID, get 10% off, and they have dedicated parking spaces right up front. Home Co., Lumber and Hardware, Hardware on Butler Avenue in Flagstaff. Okay, here's where we're at so far. Um, we talked about Governor Ducey's state of the state last hour. We're going to get into the border issues and some other foster care issues here uh, in just a second, some clips. Uh, he, he talked about what we covered last hour was D.C. spending and you know, all of that, but he, he mentioned how Arizona has been a kind of a jobs – juggernaut, I guess, and people are moving and, and setting up companies here. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. Uh, Arizona continues to be that place to go to. He, he talked a lot about the other failed states, something we talk about here every day, the, the blue states, the Democrat states, the Californians, the New York, where New York's where, where people just want to get out of. Nobody wants to live in these places anymore. He reminded people, something we remind people a lot of every day is, great, welcome, don't bring the crap that you left here. We don't need California here. If you escaped California, you escaped for a reason. We don't need just a little bit more taxes or a little bit more of this or that. Leave that behind and remember why you're coming to Arizona. Uh, he, he also talked about um, he also talked about the uh, the budget and adding more to the rainy day fund, which I just I, I'm all for rainy day funds. Believe me, especially personally, uh, I think it's it's about the downpour. You should save up and and be prepared. So many people in this country are not, but the state now has over a billion dollar rainy day fund, and to add more to that is just taking tax dollars out of your pocket and my pocket. It's time to uh, reduce taxes even more, reduce fees even more. We don't need to take more money out of the economy to, to beef up the government's rainy day fund, especially in light of the way the, the budget's grown. The Arizona state budget, I, I've looked at it. It was, you know, eight point something billion when I first started this show or maybe a year or two before, and it's grown all the way to over $12 billion in just a few short years. It's going to grow even more. It's not even taking into account all this federal money that's flowing in from, from the CARES Act, of which the governor has over, I heard, over $2 billion available. So anyway, budgets uh, surplus or, or, or rainy day fund. He wants to add more to that on education. It's where we left off. This is a big one. Uh, summer camp for kids that have fallen behind because of these, these failing schools and these schools that decided to stay closed longer than it should have in virtual education, which is total nonsense was not needed just as the masks are not needed in school. He said, and this was a good quote here, too much attention put on masks and not a, nearly enough on math. They're more concerned, the mask, the mask, critical race theory, mask, critical race theory, mask. You hear that stuff, you better run from that school because there ain't no fixing those people. And you got to take care of your kids' education, which leads me to one of his bigger points on education, expanding school choice. Basically, he left it up to the legislature. He said, send me what you got and I'll sign it. I would send him, first of all, tax credits for people who want to go to private school. Should You should be able to make your own tax credit. Right now, you have to do a convoluted system through the state. If you had, if you did like a $2,400 tax credit to your kids at a private school, you can't do it to your own kid. Change that. The backpack of money should be changed. Uh, it should be easier to get funding or some money, some kind of tax credit. I don't know what the answer is. But the answer is not the traditional school in all cases, the, 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 the public neighborhood school. And if you leave that and go to a private school, you just have to fund it yourself. You get to pay twice. I get to pay to take my kid away from that school and go to a private school. And I get to pay my property taxes even though my kids aren't in that school. It's ridiculous. So that, that, that was the good news uh, on that side was that Governor Ducey seemed very open to send me the bills. Plus, oh, he said critical race theory. Um, uh, teach uh, teach uh, critical thinking, not critical race theory. And he had the opportunity last year to sign a good critical anti, you know, banning of critical race theory bill, but that thing got destroyed. So I hope the legislature acts fast and, and bans critical race theory in this state, diversity, equity, inclusion, whatever name it goes by, because these people are sneaky. They'll just change it. And also uh, more easily being able to move your kid to the school of your choice uh, going forward. That needs to happen. Uh, oh, and one more thing. He said all curriculum, and this was a bill that was being floated by several uh, legislators last year that, that didn't make it, all curriculum should be 
put online so it's searchable so that anybody, any parent can go and, and search and, and, and see what the kids are being taught. I think that is an absolutely uh, great idea. All right, let's, uh, should we do the border? Let's do the border next and then we'll go back to some of these other uh, ones. So he talked about the border and there's a lot of federal undertones here in his in his uh, speech today, Governor Ducey's final state of, is, by the way, if you weren't with us last hour, is this his last state of the state address because he's termed out. He cannot run for governor again. A lot of federal undertones, which I don't know. I don't have any secret source here or anything. I just think he's eyeballing something federal, but I could be wrong. We, we shall see. Uh, but on the border issues, he's talking about uh, multi-state agreements between Arizona and Texas, and then he had five points on the border. Here it is. Here's the plan. Number one, resources. Our budget will make significant new investments to strengthen the border strike force, provide advanced equipment to aid in the pursuit of dangerous criminals, and deploy the latest drone technology to bolster surveillance and stop the cartels in their tracks. That's good. If it's possible, that's great. Next, the rule of law. This is not just a public safety crisis. It's a humanitarian crisis. And the human traffickers that prey on the desperation of people looking for a better life need to pay the consequences. It's time for us to increase the criminal penalties against human smuggling and provide more funding to border counties to ensure prosecution and incarceration. And recently, the mayor of Yuma has been ringing a bell nationally. The border crisis, the town's being swamped, absolutely swamped down there. So good stuff there. This is Governor Ducey's State of the State Third, just a little while ago. Boots on the ground and multi state intelligence sharing. Border security is national security. And the lack of action from DC puts every American at risk. In November, I dispatched Arizona's top ranking enforcement officers to partner with their peers in Texas. Major General Kerry Muhlenbeck, Department of Public Safety Colonel Heston Silbert, and Department of Homeland Security Director Tim Romer. In December, we finalized the plan. Texas Governor Greg Abbott and I are teaming up to form the American Governor's Border Strike Force, a commitment between states to do what the Biden administration is unwilling to do, patrol and secure our border. Now, this one is interesting. The American Governor's Border Strike Force, a multi-state uh, effort. And, and, and I'd like to see what the feds do on that. You know Biden's going to flip out over this one. But this, is a, this would be a step in the right direction, taking care of our own borders, which the feds should do. You start to question what their necessity is. Final fourth, point. Oh, no, the wall point. and physical barriers. They work. Representatives Joanne Osborne and Tim Dunn and Senator Cena Kerb were with me in Yuma just a few weeks ago, and we saw it firsthand. People walking across a wide open and unprotected border. Our border is a patchwork of federal, state, tribal, and private lands. Where Arizona can add physical barriers to the border, we will. But if the entire southern border isn't secure, neither is our nation. So fifth, I am calling on our United States Senators to join this fight (laughs) to secure our border. No member of Arizona's congressional delegation that actually cares about the safety of our communities should vote yes on any legislation until the president agrees to language that does the following. Secures our border with a wall, a physical barrier, and virtual surveillance. 
increases resources to the local communities that have been devastated by these dangerous open border policies and makes it clear that our border is not open to illegal immigration. Good luck getting Biden to agree to a border wall. But I, I agree. I, yeah, that's what we should do. Senator Kelly, <laughs> Senator Cinema, <laughs> check my website. <laughs> We've even drafted the language <laughs> for you. The takeaway in Arizona, we will secure our border. We will protect public safety. We will not back down. We will fight this fight until Washington, D.C. finally acts. All right, so that's Governor Ducey on the border issues, and uh, I find it, I, I find this American governor border strike force, this combined effort between Arizona and Texas, and may, presumably other states would be welcome. I find that fascinating because that's taking matters into your own hand. Now, back real quick before we go to break, uh, a couple weeks ago or last month or so, I can't remember, as recently, Governor Ducey was down at the border, and I was critical because he was, now in a way, it was the photo op, he was in front of a it looked like 20 feet, a 20-foot span between the old border wall and the new border wall that, that Trump was doing, and it was wide open. You could walk right through it. And I, I, I was ripping on it saying, look, I think I had Congressman Andy Biggs on at the time, and I said, let's go down there, you and I, Andy, and uh, let's bring some uh, some posts and just cement them in for now and get some some plywood up, something. Uh, to, why doesn't the governor just do that? Now, now, Congressman Biggs was saying he and I would probably be arrested, but the governor wouldn't. Let the governor go down there and build it. And uh, if they have gaps in the wall, just go build it. What are they going to do? Arrest the governor? Uh, so we'll see what we'll see what happens on that. But I'd say start filling in those border sections wherever you can. If the feds are going to fail to do that, your thoughts, though, folks, I'd love to hear from you. Talk with Jeff at iCloud dot com. Go ahead and send me an email. Talk with Jeff at iCloud dot com. By the way, we will have Congressman uh, Paul Gosar will give us an update tomorrow on the program. So stick around for that. I'm not sure on the time yet, but definitely be on the program tomorrow, Congressman. Paul Gosar. Sponsor, Timberline Firearms and Training. And, you know, they offer courses for new gun owners. And there's a lot of you out there. A lot of you have gotten guns over Christmas, and uh, you need training, especially if you're new to firearms. They have their first shots program. If you're a little more seasoned and kind of in the middle there, they have intermediate handgun training and many other opportunities, all the way up to, up to expert levels. They have all of that stuff. Plus, they have their Stop the Bleed training. Go check out their website, Timberline Firearms firearms.us to get the date on that uh that's free they do it every month it, it it can save lives so check that out at timberline firearms and training uh you can stop by their indoor shooting range five minutes north of the flagstaff mall they's, they've also got ammunition there they've got uh, liberty safes so they've got all the accessories check it out timberline firearms and training just about five minutes north of the flagstaff mall Plus, uh, please give them a call for their training opportunities, 928-526-7900, 928-526-7900, Timberline Firearms and Training. All right, let's come back, finish up the State of the State address. We'll see if we can rustle up Olivia to read some of your emails. Keep those coming. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Hang tight. Back in just a minute. Welcome back. We've got a couple of emails. Olivia's back with me again. How you doing? Good. I think we briefly spoke earlier. Yeah, I can't. I was even trying to get those. Seconds I know. It kicked me right back in. Uh, you know, my apologies to uh, Steve Zipperman, who is a candidate for Arizona Senate for Legislative District One, which is by and large Prescott area. Now we're supposed to have him on. I got that's how crazy it got because I was trying to break down Governor Ducey's entire one hour long state of the state address. I still got more clips. Maybe we'll throw them in the show later this week or maybe today. Well, we got 10 minutes. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're putting in yeah, any extra it, clips. It, it, exactly. Um, so I barely got. So I was we were going because the, the, the state of the state address ended and then we had to rip it apart and then try to get it on and, and try to understand what we were talking about, too. So it's, it's kind of yeah. that. But anyway, we had a good weekend. It was actually shorts weather in, in, in Verde Valley this past weekend. That was. That was nice. I know. It was so nice. Uh, I mean, especially compared to the last time we were down there, it was like 
raining and cold. It was yeah. kind of cold today, too. But, yeah, it was so warm down there. Yeah, those uh, legs need a little sun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Good but weekend, what now. I wanted to mention was that um, over the weekend, one of the movies we watched was Titanic. With Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, and I'm um, not going to spoil anything, but, um, yeah, <laughs> no, obviously. Don't, don't. The, the ship goes down. <laughs> well, no, I meant about him. Oh. But anyway. Well, it's been out so long. This is okay. like 95. Share the door, Leo. Or, or Kate, <laughs> or whatever her name was. But anyway, go on. Um, anyways, <laughs> um, I was going to say that then um, some people say that they would never do this now, but it was like, okay, um, first class people first. First class people get the lifeboats, and the first class people are like, I hope it's not too crowded. Yeah, yeah. Leave some room for my yeah. baggage, please. <laughs> first class people only. Nowadays, it wouldn't be that. It wouldn't be first class. It would be vaccinated only. <laughs> vaccinated to get the lifeboats. Ma- masked over there. Um, All of you unvaccinated, unmasked. We're going to lock you in the lower levels, filling up with water, and uh, you're just going to have to jump over the side yeah but like if you Leo. had been wearing a mask and you had jumped over the side you would have survived well if you were vaccinated <laughs> yeah back if this was titanic and not to spoil but the ship goes down and hits an iceberg really? it's actually really sad because they had like half the amount of lifeboats they needed on they didn't have enough and so they were titanic, first, class yeah. first. <laughs> and then they had the doors locked so first class you get to go first and then second class and then like steerage you know down below it with would the rats totally be vaccinated locked. unvaccinated yeah now it'd be that's yeah. what i thought as soon yeah. as i saw it yeah because in the life rafts only the vaccinated um would survive i don't think that's too far-fetched i i do think though I'm hopeful and I'm sensing that the COVID narrative and hysteria has really broken down the past three weeks and they're, they've they lost it because so many, uh, you're back in school now for a week plus. Uh, I'm sure you're talking to people that, oh yeah, my aunt got COVID, my, my mom got COVID. Everybody that I'm talking to got COVID over Christmas. It's everywhere. And, they, and by and large, that most of them survived. You know, I feel for oh, anybody. Did you tell everyone about the new variant? Oh, yeah, I heard that this really dangerous new variant came out. Um, what was its, na- its name again? Uh, yeah, I heard that there's this new variant called I I, I don't give a crap a cron. Oh yeah, that was right. That's what it was. That's the yeah, and it's not that. I, it's just come on, move on already, people. Uh, it's just insanity. So. Uh, th- th- there was a lot of COVID cases. I was just talking about this, but there's there's less hospitalizations going on. And then like 40% of the hospitalizations we find out aren't COVID. They just happened to find out they got COVID because they got tested for, you know, they went there for another surgery or something. And then they tested positive for COVID. They didn't even know they had it. So now all of a sudden they're having to change all those numbers. So yeah, I just don't care. I, I got COVID. I dealt with it. I care that you're all healthy. I want everyone to be healthy out there, Olivia. Don't get me wrong there. I just... I, I, I don't need the government talking about this anymore, and I, I don't care about your stupid policies because they all failed. They failed. I End mean, story. like, yeah. That's all you got to say about that. Oh, I was just thinking, like. You're, like, drifting off. Okay, well, I was just thinking. Okay. Anything you want to share? Nah, don't share. <laughs> anyway, let's get to uh, some email comments here, Olivia. Uh, you can email anytime. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. But before we do that, let me let me mention our last sponsor of the day. Um, I mentioned this earlier. I noticed the price increases that are going on right now. And um, I think we got an email in here about housing price increases that that's going on. And um, it, it's staggering. And I think we're going to have some really high inflation. And, and my, my friend's at Nova Home Loans, uh, Kim Dawson, uh, I think she agrees. And talking about inflation here running fastest pace in nearly 40 years, and that's the, that's the numbers that are doctored up. And most Fed officials now see at least three rate hikes this year. And, you know, now, now may be a great time to take advantage of what's still very, very low rates, pay off your high-rate credit cards, and consolidate other revolving debt by refinancing your mortgage. Whether you have perfect credit or not-so-perfect credit, you need to call Kim Dawson at Nova Home Loans. Kim knows how to find the program that works specifically for you. And since Nova is both a bank and a broker, she has the flexibility to shop for the best rates and terms. Call Kim for a purchase or to refinance before the feds start raising rates at 928-310-6458. That's 928 928- 310-6458. Kim will even waive the lender fees on all VA loans. Call Kim Dawson, the girl who gets it done, 928-310-6458. Nova Home Loans, NMLS 3087. Terms and conditions may apply. BK number 0902429, an equal housing opportunity. All right, emails, Olivia. Okay, this is Ron uh, from Starlight Lanes in Flagstaff. Ron, hey, Ron. This was released this afternoon. 
As a property owner, all is good. As someone who is trying to recruit an employee, not so good. Yeah, and what he's referring to is this article that he sent a link to, uh, streetinsider.com. Expects slightly slower home price growth. Market's still booming in 2022. They're predicting like, uh, what was this, quarter four? Um, they're still predicting um, pretty good increases. I haven't had a chance to read this whole article. Bottom line is we saw staggering increases in property uh, values last year. You know, it's also booming is the um, the luxury market. There's home selling for like, I saw something in like the 100 plus million, $200 million range for a home. Wow. What, what is that? That's like, you know, that's, that's like a buying mansion. a city. That's more than a mansion. It's like, you think you'd be buying a whole town or a whole city or something. I, I don't know. Not today. Yeah. So who knows? I don't know what the market's going to do, but it seems like, I hate using the phrase that it's different this time, Olivia, because it's, uh, I don't think it's like. It's never different. It's, yeah. But this time. There wasn't as much as, there's probably still funny business going on, but not like we saw in 2008, and people truly want to get out of the cities. Uh, Governor Ducey was talking about this in the State of the State Address. He was saying, hey, if you're coming from California, come here for the right reasons. You know, remember why you're leaving. Oh, yeah. And, and, like, and they're fleeing, like, so they're driving um, the prices up. Oh, I hate California and what they're doing. I need to come here yeah. to escape. But wait a second. Why don't you have that? And, yeah. oh, we still need to keep people safe here. Oh, we just need a little mask. bit. We just, yeah. Your property taxes are so low. You can afford more. Uh, so just a little bit of an increase, yeah. All right, another email. Remember, you can email anytime. Uh, talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Uh, TJ from Prescott. Multi-state governor's border strike force. Building our own border wall, et cetera, et cetera. Why do we need the federal government? <laughs> I totally agree, Ed. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we should become an independent country <laughs> with federations with other states and maybe a common defense pack. Food for thought. It's not, that is food for thought. That is probably a whole show there, TJ. I, and I don't think, I kind of agree. Well, it, you start to wonder because Governor Ducey, if you're just joining us, if you missed it, he was talking about the multi-state governor's border strike force to fix what the go- uh, what the feds aren't doing. They're not enforcing border security. He was also saying, hey, we need to build and a wall. And if you need to fix the feds, then that means that they're not... <laughs> they're not doing... One of the few things they're supposed to actually do is secure our, our, our borders. Uh, you know, it's an, and, and, and deliver the mail, believe it or not, and that, that organization is bankrupt. So the things that they're actually assigned to do with the Constitution, they're not protecting our borders. They're not... Doing that, so the governor's saying, "Hey, I'm going to get together with Texas and I assume other states as well, and we're going to do it ourselves, and we're going to secure the border ourselves. We're going to fill those gaps." Remember, I was just about to say Texas does have the right to become its own, um, like Texas has the right to break up into multiple states, but I don't know if they tried to become their own country. I think we'd be back to uh, 18, you know, 60s here and, and Civil War type thing if you tried to leave. So, uh, you know what? I, I don't want to – TJ, this is a more prevalent thought right now in this country than perhaps since the Civil War, which is states are looking at this situation saying, what the heck do I have in, in – in, in, I've seen tons of articles. What the heck do I have in common with D.C. anymore and people in New York? I watch – Olivia, you know I comment on this if I'm watching something and I'm too cheap to pay the $10 for the subscription, so I pay 5 and then they throw the commercials in. It's an eye-opener because I watch I the commercials. I honestly like the commercials yeah. because then I can go you get a, break, get so you a get cup food. of tea, go get my blanket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but I, I'm watching these commercials, and sometimes, like, I'll, I'll watch Yellowstone, that, that series with Kevin Costner, which is geared towards probably more male audience and people who want to be independent and stuff, and then I'll see a commercial that's just weird from, like, the city, from the East Coast, <laughs> I, I, and I say I it all. I would watch Yellowstone if I could. Yeah, it's a if little, yeah, yeah, maybe someday, but it's pretty rough. It's pretty rough. But I, I watch these commercials and say, they, we're living in a different world. TJ, we will explore this more and uh, I, I, on a future show. It's a, it's a great comment. And remember, you can co- send your comments. Talk with Jeff at iCloud.com. Olivia, that's it. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Okay. All right. We'll try Save to give you a little more time tomorrow. We've got Congressman Paul Gosar tomorrow, folks. Have a great, safe night. Be back here tomorrow at 4 or 6.